Our next story relates to the Beacon Project. So this is an inspiring project which has been developed by the charity WaterAid and with the water company Anglian Water. Now, the Beacon Project was established in 2017 to bring clean water, decent toilets and good hygiene to every person living in Lahan, a small town in the southeastern part of Nepal. The project is a partnership between a number of stakeholders, all striving to create a model of best practice for delivering water and sanitation and hygiene in Nepal. I recently spoke to Richard Boucher, Strategic Development Director at Anglian and Chair of their Water Aid Committee. I started by asking Richard what it is that they do. So Anglian, along with our alliance partners, uh, we've been raising money for water aid for um, tens of years. Um, and what we're looking and what we were looking at is how do we create a closer link with how the money is being spent? And probably about five years ago, five, six years ago, we started to work very closely with water aid in Nepal. And we um, identified a city, a small city, it's uh, about 90,000 people, Lahan, down in the southeast of Nepal, um, looking at how do we help gain access for the marginalized communities, access to safe water, as well as all the um, hygiene, sanitation, all the challenges that they have and, and trying to improve. And the difference for this well, I was about to say, was there any any particular link that led you to Nepal, or was it that 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 was an area that had a need, and that was why you went there? Because there's been supporting winning city between Anglian and Nepal. We'd been supporting Nepal um, indirectly by allocating some of the money that we raised. So, okay. as, as a community, we raise um, maybe um, seven hundred and fifty to a million pounds a year as a company. Wow. Um, and we wanted to, and that that's from the strength of all our partner organizations, as well as employees, as well as some of our customers. And we wanted some of that to be directly linked to work, but also that as a company, we could draw on the strengths of our employees, the expertise we have, as well as the partners organization and the skills that they have to try and do something different. Excellent. Now, um, and you're not just giving money because you're doing something very different to, to traditional giving, I think. Can you just talk me through what that is? Yeah, so we fund the program out in Nepal, so that, that's an element of giving money. But what we're also doing is, is employees as well as partner organisations are either donating equipment as well as expertise. So we're working with a number of organisations in Nepal, the Ministry of Water, the Nepal Water Supply Corporation, as well as the local municipality. And it's a collaborative effort between all of us, as long, along with Water Aid Nepal, to um, and in, in a number of areas. So we're looking at how do we improve the water security? So we've been working with the corporation to improve their boreholes, to improve chlorination. We're also looking at how do we get safe, clean water? So in the town, they had a lot of leakage, intermittent water supply. So um, they were probably getting water two or three hours a day. It was not particularly good quality, a lot of leakage. And for those who know, if you get negative pressure in the main, it sucks everything in. Yeah. So that's what they were getting in the water main. They weren't particularly testing for quality. So we started to bring appropriate standards, not necessarily the standards that we operate to here, but working with them to identify things. So over, over the last five years, we've improved the chlorination. We've improved the quality of the boreholes. We've sunk more boreholes. We've extended the network. We've also when you say we, because because my understanding is that there's a sort of link, isn't there? There's a hard link that, that someone in Nepal can actually ring yep. the technical expert in Anglian Water and say, I've got this problem and can you help? So the teams, so that's the strength. So the teams, we've got water quality, uh, we've had leakage experts, we've had some of our drilling team, we've had people go out and train them. So there've been access to that technical expertise but also at, okay. out on the ground to help move them forward. So from simple things like trying to get them not to wear flip-flops when they're repairing leaks, to improve PPE through to standards around um, chlorination, testing for water quality. Um, and it's then- incredible. And How long have you been doing this? Uh, so we've been doing this for about five years now. Okay, so, so it's not, this isn't a new initiative. This is something where now relationships are really being built up. People say, yeah. We we had a lessons learned report um, written by somebody and researched by somebody in Nepal, and their comment was they'd not seen something like this before because 
water aid and NGOs tend to have not necessarily the strongest reputation because they tend to fly in and fly out. Over a period of time, we've built trust yeah. with the government. So we have access to the government. We have access to, um, we brought the MD of the Water Supply Corporation over to the UK to experience some of the things. So we've built a relationship where they actually understand we're doing this because we want to help, not for any ulterior motive. I, I think this is so... The, I mean, big brother is not a phrase, you know, it's a George Orwellian sort of phrase of big brother, but you're genuinely being a big, loving brother to to the utility in Nepal. It's what it feels like. You know, I've, I've got a problem. I can imagine someone on the ground going, I've got a problem. I don't quite know how to deal with it. And they can call upon the resources and the expertise that they just would have no usual a a ability to access. Um, they can call upon that with an angling water. It's such a wonderful major. How are people in angling water finding it? So the, the team is, it, who is it an annoyance. Oh my God, I've got another call from Nepal. Or a, well, a... well, generally the calls are at about six or seven o'clock in the morning because they, they're five and three quarter hours ahead. For some reason, it's three quarters of an hour. But um, so they, you know, we have early morning calls with them. There are teams, and and they love doing it because they get the satisfaction of seeing progress seeing um things happen so a team went um, somebody went out and they helped install magnetic flow meters so they can actually start to measure what's going on in the system they see that that they they leave things get finished um they're doing it to the right standards so we're trying to improve the standards that they construct to because there's always a tendency for shortcuts to be taken so demonstrating that a borehole sunk properly lasts longer, the yield is better, the quality is better. But there's a lot of work that we're doing and supporting that's not just about water supply, it's about, and water aid are driving some of this in Nepal, which is the, you know, the schools, um, community. So the Dalit community, the marginalized community, before we arrived, they didn't have access to pipe water because they didn't want to give it to them. We've managed to change that. We started to give them taps outside their houses. We've now moved and the corporation are putting taps and access inside their, their, their houses. So they actually have tap supply. We've also been building community toilets because they've had no safe place yeah. to, uh, to go to the loo. So there are community toilets that they then run. And what's happened is the municipality has come into this. We've got support from the mayor and they've set up their own wash unit within the municipality. So we're supporting them. So the whole idea is this, why we call it the Beacon Project is it wasn't only just to do Lahan, but we're able to, some of the learning. So when we've done leakage training, they brought people from across Nepal to be trained and they're using the equipment in other places. So we have had equipment donated that they're then able to use borehole standards. They've started to apply that across um, other areas. We we introduced labs, so a very simple lab. It's you know just sort of a basic kitchen with a few testing kits. But they're starting to improve the quality and monitor it. Brilliant. Well, Without our control, they've um, you know they've started to build more of these across Nepal. So things are replicating, and that's what we want. Excellent. Well. Richard, thank you for telling me this story. Um, what would your advice be to any other utility that maybe wants to follow this model? I think um, the bits that I've learned from this process is it takes time. So it's not a thing that you can do in a year. It's not a thing that you can do in two years. So my advice would be you've got to commit. We've had support, you know, to, from the top down within the organization. I was going to go, I'm sure that this is something Peter Simpson, your chief executive, if he owns it and he believes in it, then that cascades through the organization and people like you follow through. Richard, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thank you very much for your time today. I wish you all the best. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Beacon Project is supported and funded by Anglian Water and its supply chain partners. Now, if you want to know more or want to get involved directly, just follow the link here.